Hi everyone, welcome to UBS Trending. I'm Anthony Pastore. Thank you so much for joining us today. As the market volatility continues, investors are looking for diversification. So one such area is within the commodities market. And joining me now to discuss opportunities and talk about whether or not we are in a late, a long-term super cycle is Jim Luke from Hartford Schroeders. Jim, great to have you on the show and thanks for being here. And I, I wanted to talk about that with you right away because in a report that you wrote, you did mention that you think we are in, well, well there's some debate anyway, over or not we're in a long-term sort of super cycle here for, for commodities. So what makes you say that and what are the benefits right now of commodities in today's environment? Hi, good morning and thank you very much for having me. Uh, yes. Basically speaking, we think the probability that we're in for a period of um, high uh, and potentially significantly higher commodity prices um, is very, very good. Uh, and we think driving that are, are, are several factors. I think most importantly, uh, especially in the context of today's global growth environment, which is looking you know, pretty poor, uh, is the fact that what we see uh, is a supply driven, a supply shortage driven strength uh, in commodity markets. Uh, and I think if we could if we could point to one factor uh, that is probably different today to previous commodity cycles, uh, it would be that high commodity prices today, particularly in the energy subsector and particularly in the metal subsector, uh, are simply not leading to a meaningful supply response. Um, and that for us gives us great confidence that as we look forward, uh, we're going to continue to see uh, very, very tight markets. I think energy is a very, very good example of that. Um, and obviously the question then becomes, well, why is that? Uh, and for us, we think this, this is one of the side effects um, of, 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 of the globe's current um, and, and, and very understandable uh, focus on climate mitigation uh, and climate change. Uh, we, we think that the uh, unwillingness to invest uh, in, in fossil fuel related projects uh, and in energy uh, production capacity uh, is basically breaking the link uh, between high energy prices uh, and a supply response. So that is that is one key factor uh, that makes us confident that we're entering a period of sustained uh, higher prices. Uh, I think if you look on the demand side of the equation, uh, then the energy transition is also uh, a key factor that differentiates this current cycle uh, from, from, from mere cyclicality. Uh, so if we look at, for example, trends in, in, in um, electric vehicles uh, or in renew renewables power generation, uh, both, both in China, uh, in Europe and increasingly in the US, uh, we think those are factors which are going to drive uh, sustained uh, significant increases in, in areas like metals demand. And, you know, and, and it's interesting you talk about, we, we talk about climate change quite a bit here and the energy transition. We talk about green tech and also, as you were talking about, the impact on fossil fuels. Um, but before we get to more of that, I, I need to talk to you about recession because there are so many investors and folks in the market and strategists who are concerned that we're either heading into one or we may already be in one, if, depending on which uh, tea leaves you're actually looking at. Uh, two negative quarters in a row of GDP, we've already had that. So by mm -hmm. definition, we're in a recession. So markets remain volatile. Um, maybe inflation has peaked. Some are saying that that's happened. But there is still concern about the recession. Can commodities continue to do as well as they've done if we go into 2023 in a recession? Um, well, if, if you look at our current portfolio in, in, in the Hartford Schroeder's um, product, um, we, we have clear biases within the positioning of that portfolio. We're, we're particularly bullish uh, on energy markets, uh, on crude oil in particular, uh, and we're particularly bullish on parts of the agricultural uh, subsector, for example, markets like wheat, uh, markets like sugar. Um, we're less confident on a cyclical basis on markets like base metals, and that's precisely for the factor uh, that you mentioned. We think that on a cyclical basis, uh, base metals are most exposed to what we see as, as broadly a likely global uh, industrial production down cycle, um, which, which, which is continuing. As we see it, the, the situation, the environment on the demand side is the worst right now in Europe. 
Um, it's been all year pretty bad in China from a property market perspective. And you know, there are signs on a cyclical, on a cyclical basis that things are going into a downtrend in the US too. So, so clearly we have to be realistic and we have to say, well, what part of the commodities complex is that most going to impact? And we think base metals uh, is probably the answer. We think other parts of the, pro the, of the commodity uh, complex are, are much less vulnerable. Uh, and particularly if we look at crude markets, again, our thesis there uh, is very much a supply side thesis. Um, we look at US production growth. Uh, we think it's growing much less than the market expected earlier this year. Uh, we look at OPEC, which is already cutting production. Uh, we look at uh, coming embargoes on Russian oil supply, which will come into effect in December and then January next year, which is, which, which, which is also going to tighten supply. And then we look at the fact that we've all already had you know, material releases from the US SBR, um, which are, if not immediately in October, then certainly by the end of the year, are going to stop, which is a net removal of supply from the market. So actually, you know, given, given the factors that we've talked about, we think we would need to see you know, a demand contraction that was meaningfully worse than what we saw in 2008, 2009, uh, to drive you know, significant retrenchments in oil prices. In fact, what we really think is going to happen is we think oil prices could well make new highs over the next six to 12 uh, months. And then if we turn to the agricultural subsector, you know, there are some very, very interesting trends there. I think one of the reasons uh, that wheat markets actually came down um, from, from the levels that we saw post the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, and actually gave back all of those gains was largely due to the market's you know, obsession uh, on the export deal uh, for, for, for Ukrainian wheat, which was reached between the Russians, the Ukrainians, the United Nations, and, and Turkey acting as a, as, as a broker. Um, we, we think, frankly, that deal is, is very likely to fall apart. Uh, and we see other areas of tightness uh, globally ar around the wheat market. Um, so so in, in a nutshell, yes, of course, you'd have to be a fool uh, to suggest that a global recession won't impact parts of the commodity complex. But the fact that we see this cycle as, as very much a supply-driven cycle uh, means that we're, we're, we're pretty com confident the returns will remain um, quite resilient. Well, let me ask you this then, Jim, because as you, we're talking about here, we've got climate change policies, we've got the Inflation Reduction Act right here in the U.S. On top of that, as you just mentioned, Ukraine, the tensions geopolitically continue around the world. Um, and then in, in addition, we've got this strength in the U.S. dollar right now, but there may be depreciation coming next year. Mm. Where, where can commodities, and we're talking about, and just as our viewers are, need to understand, we're not just talking about energy here. We're talking about metals. We're talking about agriculture. What role can commodities play in a diversified portfolio, given all of the constraints that we're talking about here? I, I think if you look historically, um, then through periods of high inflation, uh, periods of stagflation, then commodities have historically been the most effective uh, portfolio diversifier uh, and source of returns that you can have. Um, but I think you know the, the key for all investors is is what does the absolute return outlook look like? And for us, when we look back at the last you know forty or fifty years. Of price returns, we ask ourselves, well, what were the conditions uh, where commodity returns have been spectacularly good, both on an absolute basis and on a relative basis, say relative to, to broad equity markets? And so we look at the 1970s, we see substantial geopolitical supply shocks uh, in the energy markets. Uh, we look at the early 2000s uh, and we see a period of you know, significant demand increase, in that case, coming from, from Chinese and emerging market uh, urbanization. Uh, and then we also see a, 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 a period of, of underinvestment in commodity supply. And then we say, well, do those conditions uh, exist today across the commodity complex? And, and we think the answer is, is, is absolutely yes. Um, so we think if, you know, and the, the other way to look at it is, well, yeah, there have been actually some pretty negative trends uh, this year. Uh, we've seen the Chinese economy in lockdown broadly for nine months and for much longer than the market expected. Uh, we've absorbed a dollar shock uh, that has been equally as big as what we saw in 2014. And of course, we've seen an absolute meltdown in across equity markets and bond markets globally. And yet commodity prices, as even we're seeing to, in, in, in today's uh, uh, price action, have remained incredibly resilient. So we ask ourselves effectively, well, what if over the next six to nine months, Chinese demand actually improves uh, because we move into a more pro-cyclical part of their cycle 
and maybe move away from zero COVID policies? What if over the next six to 12 months, the dollar is not on an absolutely, you know, um, almost, a, almost a historically unprecedented period of strength? Um, what, what if the dollar does weaken? Then, then of course, the, the absolute return um, prospects for commodity prices then improve further. Terrific. Jim, thank you so much. And, and on top of that, I mean, as we can see, you know, compared to history, commodities are actually pretty inexpensive on a relative basis. You know, if the valuations are cheap. So um, this is a really good time to be having this conversation. Really glad you uh, you joined us. And it's almost like the, you know, the sun was shining on you this whole time to really just shed some, <laughs> literally some light on this conversation, Jim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with the energy of the sun. Very apropos for our conversation. Good to see you, Jim. Thanks for, thanks for joining right. us. Appreciate we'll have you back time. soon. Thank you very much. Anytime, right, anytime. Bye. Jim Luke from Hartford Schroders, everybody. So, uh, great conversation. Thank you, Jim. So uh, please uh, check out our website, UBS.com forward slash views for more information from UBS and some of our best partners, including Hartford Schroders. And plus, you can follow UBS on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Plus, you can check out all of our past UBS trending episodes on demand information right there on your screen. And as always, if you do have any questions about your portfolio, particularly the commodities conversation today that Jim and I had, make sure to speak with a financial advisor. Until next Next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day, everyone, and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.